Hello, glad to have you back here today. Before we start our lesson, I, uh, a couple of things occurred to me, and I, I want to pass them on to you. Uh, it's been a challenge to uh, present a lesson on the topic of Proverbs. Uh, what I'm talking about is that in a lot of scripture, uh, you've got a story. Uh, there's a good, but, good guy and a bad guy. Uh, there's, a, there's a situation that uh, you follow, you get, uh, get the action, and then there's a re resolution which usually has uh, an important spiritual uh, message embedded in it, or it's very obvious. Proverbs, on the other hand, is some uh, short shots, some sound bites, as it is. Now, they're all good advice, but how much good advice can you take, you know, at a time? Of course, we're only looking at uh, 12 verses or so, and trying to extract the best we can uh, the, the meaning and the full meaning uh, of those verses. Now, what I would suggest is that uh, the way uh, to approach Proverbs, uh, that I'll try to do it here in these lessons, but also I, I would uh, encourage you to do it in your personal study. That uh, as we encounter, uh, you know, these wise sayings, uh, we should try and think of examples in our life that illustrate what the sayings are telling us. And I think by doing that, uh, it, it will help reinforce the truth of what God is uh, trying to get across to us in these scriptures. I've got a couple of things uh, that I can add to what, uh, what we have in our lessons today. Now, uh, welcome to lesson number three. Uh, we're going to uh, study some more verses in Proverbs, uh, verses 21 through 35. Last week, we uh, learned that we should trust God for the best directions. And I suggested that you memorize a particular a couple of verses. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, verses 5 and 6. And since I suggested that you do that, I've been working on it, and I'm going to try and recite it for you. Keeping in mind that my short-term memory is, fails me sometimes. But those verses tell us to trust the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Okay, I think that worked out okay. So, trust God for the best directions. Now, this, this week we're going to look at uh, uh, godly, uh, how the way godly wisdom leads us to treat others with respect. This uh, lesson is found on page 28 in the study, study guide. And as you probably know, if you've used the guide, it contains all the verses that we're going to be talking about today, plus some commentary. Now, the commentary that's contained in the study guide are, is for your use. I have some additional information. I don't necessarily uh, try and uh, uh, recite the rest of the advice that you can read for yourself. But uh, I think the combination of having a chance to talk about it and, and and to read it is a good way of cementing these uh, principles. Now, we ended up uh, last week with uh, verse 12 in chapter 3, and uh, we're not going to be covering these verses today, but just, just a summary of what we find there. Now, uh, Proverbs 13 through 18, it's a poem written in the praise of wisdom. And, and the idea that it's uh, meant to convey is that wisdom is a blessing to the person who acquires it. And they should uh, do everything in their power to acquire wisdom. And then uh, Proverbs 19 and 20, uh, 
it, it asserts that wisdom played a part in the creation uh, of, of the uh, earth and, and of, of the universe. That uh, behind this creation was God's wisdom. And I think that's, that's uh, uh, an idea that is hard to get our arms around, but I think it's very true. Okay, let's uh, start reading now. And uh, we'll read uh, Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses 21 through 26. And uh, wisdom from God brings confidence. Okay, chapter, or verse 21. Maintain sound wisdom and discretion. My son, don't lose sight of them. They will be your life. Will, it will be life for you an adornment for your neck. Then you will go safely on your way. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. You will lie down and your sleep will be pleasant. Don't fear danger or the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from a snare. Okay, we can't do much more uh, for these verses other than try to restate them in a different language, perhaps. Uh, that first verse uh, leads you to uh, be sure to practice good judgment and thoughtfulness. Uh, the, uh, the idea of sound wisdom could be translated good judgment and uh, discretion could be translated thoughtfulness. These are two characteristics that you want to claim to. Now, verse 22 uh, teaches us that uh, these two characteristics should be uh, in, internalized. They should become part of your inner being. Now, not only will they be interior uh, parts of your being, they will show through in your actions. So they're uh, to be uh, prized and to be sought. The result will be, uh, as uh, shown in verse 23, they will be your guide through life. In other words, good judgment and thoughtfulness. And they will help you remain on a godly path. In other words, uh, your foot will not stumble. And uh, when you're on a godly path, you're protected from being on a slippery slope where footing is difficult. Now, here's, here's uh, one that we can all relate to, I believe. It's verse 24. In order to sleep without anxiety is to enjoy great confidence. In other words, if you're a bit anxious or upset, the time uh, comes for you to go to sleep, it's difficult. Well, you'll, uh, with, with uh, this good judgment and uh, the thoughtfulness that you apply, uh, you have uh, confidence in God's protection. And uh, furthermore, uh, put your trust in God and you won't go around fearing a catastrophe. We're in the middle of a pandemic right now. And uh, by trusting God, we don't need to go around uh, in constant fear, but we need to be thoughtful and, and we need to be, uh, uh, take into consideration all the, the things that we can do to protect ourselves. The other thing is, uh, this phrase, uh, don't fear the ruin of the wicked when it comes. I think that it has to do with you are protected from making a really bad decision. That's when the ruin of the wicked comes. It's a result of bad decisions. Now, in the next few verses, 
we're going to be talking about uh, uh, kindness between uh, people and their relationships. We have Old Testament uh, uh, verses which support this, and I would call your attention to Leviticus 19, uh, verse 18. Love your neighbor as yourself. We're familiar with that. Jesus quotes it in the New Testament. So these, these verses that we'll read uh, contain four don't do's with regard to, uh, to your neighbor. Let's read uh, verses 27 through 30. When it is in your power, don't withhold good from the one to whom it belongs. Don't say to your neighbor, go away, come back later, I'll give it tomorrow when it is there with you. Don't plan any harm against your neighbor, for he trusts you and lives near you. And don't accuse anyone without cause when he has done you no harm. Okay. As a rule of life, be well-mannered, and ethical in whatever you do uh, and, and don't withhold what is due someone. In other words, if it's owed to that person, be sure that they're compensated. Now, the, the leader sees that everyone has limits. So he says, when it is in your power. So uh, we all know that there are instances when what we can do is not necessarily going to be good for the person. In other words, the good that we can do sometimes doesn't help. But to the extent that you have the power of doing it, don't hesitate. Do good for the one who deserves it. Okay, verse 28, I believe that uh, it, it has to do that you, you treat, you, how to treat someone you have an arrangement with and uh, you treat them fairly. It might apply to someone who is in your employee, in other words, one of your employees, and uh, it's payday. Well, don't tell them to come back next week. It's payday, and if you've got it, give it. Don't withhold it. When I was a paper boy, I would sometimes, I would have a particular customer uh, who would use one or another ploy to try to reduce what he owed me. Since I was eight years old, I didn't take any particular action, but I recognized what was going on. He would say, but oh, by the way, last Wednesday I didn't get my newspaper. So I'd knock off a nickel so that, uh, because according to him, he didn't get his newspaper. Then other times he'd say, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll flip you for it. Heads, you know, well, what do you, what do you take, heads or tails? So I had a 50-50 chance of getting paid uh, or a 50-50 chance of not getting paid. But I knew dang well the guy had enough to pay me because he was flipping a quarter. So, when, when someone is due something and you have the ability to, to uh, provide it, do it. Now, this verse 29, uh, it, it refers to, uh, when, uh, when it talks about your neighbor, it must be a member of your community. It's not only the guy that lives next door, but uh, it, it's the community in general. And uh, I thought of an example on, on this one uh, because it talks about trust and someone who lives near you. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the term Ponzi scheme. Uh, in case you're not, let me give you a brief description. It's a scheme that is promoted as a lucrative investment, but uh, it's not really an investment. And let me explain a little bit. There, there was a major 
Ponzi scheme in the, in the uh, press a few years back. And the guy that put it together was named Bernie Madoff. And uh, since uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, causing any defamation here, it was well documented in, in the newspaper. But what he did was he had a circle of friends and he himself was a wealthy person. And he had a circle of friends which were also wealthy. And he hatched this scheme by which he would promise uh, extraordinary returns if they would give, they'd place their money with him. And it would go on the, the order of, okay, if, if you would invest $100,000 with me, I can guarantee you get 10% interest. And probably interest on bonds and so forth at that time was going for maybe 4% or 3%. So 10% sounded pretty good. And he said, uh, you can take it in, in a couple of different ways. If you'd like, I can, I can pay you $800 a month. And uh, you, you can, you can uh, put that back to use. Or if you're willing to wait for the year, I'll pay you back $12,000. I'll give you 12%. I'll give you $1,000 a month. And uh, so it sounded like a good deal. And so he started, started this amongst his closest associates and friends, and he was paying it off. But the thing was, he wasn't investing the money. He was an invest, investor and had all the credentials, but he wasn't necessarily uh, investing it. As a matter of fact, Records showed that he hadn't made a trade, uh, an investment trade, in uh, over 10 years. What he was doing was paying off the first investors with money he was getting from the next wave of investors. And he contacted, through his contacts, people that knew him and then further promoted him. It turned into be a lot of money. But of course, it's going to end because the, the guys that are at the tail end of the investment uh, the period, th their money has been spent for, for other people. And that's precisely what happened in this case. Uh, there was a drop in, in the market, uh, financial, financial crisis, and it revealed uh, what uh, Bernie was doing. And uh, he went to prison and uh, had to make restitution to the extent that he could, because he was a wealthy guy, but he certainly couldn't return all the money. But it's an example, I think it's a prime example of taking advantage of your neighbors, people in your community, people that he knew or had associations with, and they trusted him. There was a little bit of greed, of course, attached because uh, he was promising great returns, and early on he was delivering those returns but uh, there were a lot of people that got hurt, particularly those that uh, put in money that they couldn't afford to lose. Now, verse 30, this, this is a principle. It's the ninth commandment, prohibits false testimony against your neighbor. And uh, so he, he's, the, the teacher here is reiterating that, and he's talking about uh, rumor mongering, in other words, uh, spreading false rumors, vicious gossip, and it kind of reminds you of uh, some of the social media, things go on in the social media. And of course we find it in uh, the mudslinging and political campaigns. Okay, all these are good, uh, uh, good thoughts and, and good statements of uh, proper behavior but I think they're reinforced when we can think of uh, examples in our uh, daily lives. Okay, let's, uh, let's conclude here and, and read uh, verses 31 to 35. And uh, there's uh, some pitfalls in human relations that uh, we want to avoid. Okay, verse 31. Don't envy a violent man or choose any of his ways. For the devious are detestable to the Lord, but he is a friend to the upright. 
The Lord's curse is on the household of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks those who mock, but gives grace to the humble. The wise will inherit honor, but he holds up fools to dishonor. Okay, good, good advice. This uh, first verse reminds me of, 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 of another scheme where it uh, exploits, uh, a person of means exploit, exploit exploits people with less and uh, they, they may have a high position in the community but be careful and not envy the person for what he has done and uh, the example that I'm I'm thinking of is is a case where someone uh, of wealth uh, becomes a, a lender and uh, he uh, kind of focuses his lending on uh, poor landowners, people that had inherited land from, from uh, through their through their uh, forebearers. Uh, actually, the, the 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 original settlers. They had land that they either farmed or did some low, uh, small uh, ranching on. Well, uh, they needed money to operate their business. Uh, this individual would would loan the money with the idea that uh, he, he got them to collateralize his loan with their land. And so it was fine if there was a good year for crops and, and, and uh, the price of the price of beef was up, uh, the, uh, the guys that owned the land would be able to pay off, which was fine. But unfortunately, uh, in the uh, this area uh, that I'm talking about, and as in many, not every year is a good year. So during those bad years, uh, the, uh, the lender got control of the land, actually owned the land. So he amassed quite a large amount of land doing this, but it was by exploiting uh, the people that didn't have much. So. Uh, that's something that uh, this proverb uh, says to you, do not adopt this method for gaining wealth. Now, the reason for doing that, for not adopting this method is that uh, these people will, uh, what they do will not go unpunished when it says that uh, they are detestable to the Lord, uh, they can be sure that they will be uh, subject to the consequences, God's disfavor. On the other hand, God will show favor to those who are righteous. In other words, those who put their trust in God and have a relationship with God, they will have good fortune. Now, when uh, we talk about it, verse 33, curses uh, on the wicked and blessing for the righteous. This is expanded in, extensively in uh, Deuteronomy 28. Uh, Moses spends uh, uh, an extended period here in that chapter describing the blessings, blessings for the obedience, the obedient and uh, curses for those who are disobedient. So the wickedness here, what does that mean? Well, it means that you're opposed to God and that you, do, you dishonor God and uh, you uh, refuse to obey. On the other hand, a righteous person believes in God, accepts his authority, and uh, does his best to obey God. Verse 34 talks to something that we encounter in, in, our, in our daily walk. It's a, it, we refer to it often in these days as bullying. Uh, God mocks those who mock. In other words, if you're, if you're one that bullies others, uh, there's a 
good chance that God will uh, bring judgment on you by bullying you. Uh, and the bottom line here is that those who mock have contempt from those that they target with their mockery. And uh, a godly person has compassion, not contempt. And uh, well, the part of the takeaway is that God helps those who cannot help themselves and who turn to him for that help. And finally, in verse 35, those who seek the wisdom of God have a permanent inheritance. Those who reject God's guidance are destined to make poor choices. So that's, uh, there are a few verses, some examples. You may have uh, thought of some uh, in your own experience. Now next week uh, we're going to be going into chapter 4 in uh, Pro Proverbs and we'll be focusing on verses 11 through 27. So take a look at that before we get together and uh, hopefully uh, your, your understanding will be uh, uh, improved and uh, you will be enlightened. So uh, let's close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, lift up to you these words that you've given us. We repeat them back to you to show our uh, agreement with you. And we are so grateful that uh, you've uh, preserved this scripture for our use. And uh, we pray that we will uh, apply it correctly and uh, consistently. And uh, we ask all of this in Jesus' name.